swear or affirm that the testimony or event you give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Trump. My name is Letitia James, and I'm the Attorney General of the Great State of New York. Before we begin, if everyone, anything you say in this in, in this examination may be used in a civil proceeding, and that could include a civil enforcement proceeding or a criminal action. Uh, uh, do you understand that? I think. Um, is that a yes? I don't know what I did wrong, but uh, the answer is yes. I do understand. Finally, this investigation is confidential. We request that you not discuss this matter, your testimony here today, and any documents that you have produced or may produce in connection with today's testimony with anyone other than your attorneys. Do you understand that, sir? No. Uh, when you say confidential, uh, we're not allowed to talk about this to the press? Or? Correct. Oh. I believe what she means is what happened in this in this room, the details of what happened in this room. Okay. Obviously, okay the, with me. yeah. Um, and the fact that it happened, yes, but not the details. Okay. Uh, Mr. Trump, what did you do to prepare for today's examination? You can start to look at your uh, Very little. Interesting. If you'd like, I could read the statement, but very little. Um, well. Read the statement. Can we go? Yes, he would like I will to. now use my uh, moment to go off the record. Thank you. Sorry. Just read the statement. We are going off the record at 9.44 a.m. Uh, Mr. Trump, I understand you have a statement that you wanted to read into the record. Yes. Um, would you please feel free to start at any Thank time? Thank you very much. This is the greatest witch hunt in the history of our country. There has never been another president or perhaps even another politician who has been persecuted, harassed, and in every other way unfairly treated like President Donald J. Trump. What Letitia James has tried to do the last number of years is a disgrace to the legal system, an affront to the New York State taxpayers, and a violation of the solemn rights and protections afforded by the United States Constitution. She developed. I once asked, if you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? I was asking that question. Now I know the answer to that question. When your family, your company, and all the people in your orbit have become the targets of an unfounded, politically motivated witch hunt supported by lawyers, prosecutors, and even the fake news media, you really have no choice. We cannot permit a renegade and out of control prosecutor to use this investigation as a means of advancing her political career. New York deserves better and this country deserves better. This is a vindictive and self-serving fishing expedition, the likes of which this country has perhaps never seen before. If there was any question in my mind, the raid on my home two days ago, Mar-a-Lago, Palm Beach, Florida, by the FBI, just two days prior to this deposition, think of it, wiped out any of that uncertainty. I have absolutely no choice because the current administration and many prosecutors in this country have lost all moral and ethical bounds of decency. Anyone in my position not taking the Fifth Amendment would be a fool, an absolute fool. One statement or answer that is ever so slightly off, just ever so slightly, by accident, by mistake, such as it was a sunny and beautiful day when actually it was slightly overcast would be met by law enforcement at a level seldom seen in this country because I've experienced it. The United States Constitution exists for this very purpose and I will utilize it to the fullest extent and defend myself against this malicious attack by this administration, this Attorney General's office, and all other attacks on my family, 
my business, and our country. Accordingly, under the advice of my counsel, and for all of the above reasons, I respectfully decline to answer the questions under the rights and privileges afforded to every citizen under the United States Constitution. This will be my answer to any further questions. So, Mr. Trump, I take it you are, are not going to answer any questions about your preparation today with your counsel. Is that correct? I mean, should I say this mm -hmm. or should I respond to that? Let's read that? For all of the reasons provided in my answer, which is incorporated herein in its entirety, I decline to answer the question. Uh, Mr. Trump, the focus of our investigation, and what we are primarily going to cover today, involves the presentation of your statements of financial condition between 2011 and the present. Uh, I take it you are generally familiar with those statements. Is that correct? For all of the reasons provided in my answer, which is incorporated herein, in its entirety, I decline to answer the question. Okay. Um, Did you review any of those statements from the period 2011 to 2021 during your preparation for today's testimony? For all of the reasons provided in my answer, which is incorporated herein, in its entirety, I decline to answer the question. Uh, counsel, I think we can all stipulate that if he says same answer, we will all understand it to, right. to be the same invocation. That's correct. To speed things up. No okay. problem. Uh, with that note, sir, um, you are currently the president of the Trump Organization, is that correct? Same answer. Uh, and when I refer to the Trump Organization, is it accurate to describe that as the trade name for an umbrella organization that holds uh, assets beneficially owned by you? Same answer. You were aware at the time this was finalized that the statement of financial condition for 2011 contained false and misleading statements, is that correct? Same answer. In preparing the 2011 Statement of Financial Conditions, uh, Alan Weisselberg and Jeff McConney worked at your direction and followed your instructions and inflated asset valuations on the Statement of Financial Conditions by employing false or misleading assumptions. Is that correct? Same answer. Uh, from at least 2005 through the present, you've had an ongoing agreement with Mr. Weisselberg and Mr. McConney that they would prepare the Statement of Financial Condition in a manner that included valuations that depended on false and misleading assumptions as a means of inflating reported values. Is that correct? Same answer. From at least 2005 through the present, you have had an ongoing agreement with Mr. Weisselberg and Mr. McConney and others that they would prepare the Statement of Financial Condition in a manner that included intentional overvaluations. Is that correct? Same answer. In preparing the 2019 Statement of Financial Condition, uh, Mr. Weisselberg and Mr. McConney worked at your direction and followed your instructions to inflate asset valuations on the statement of financial condition by employing false and misleading assumptions. Is that correct? Same answer. Mr. Trump, going back to your Doral loan, is it correct that through the use of the inflated statement of financial condition to obtain a favorable interest rate, that you were able to save approximately 6% per annum on interest payments owing on your $125 million in loans from Deutsche Bank? Same answer. Regarding your Chicago property, is it correct that through the use of the inflated statement of financial condition, you were able to uh, save at least 4% per annum in the interest payments on loans from Deutsche Bank originating in 2012 in connection with the Trump International Hotel in Tower, Chicago? Same answer. Uh, with regards to your old post office property, is it correct that through the use of the inflated statement of financial condition to obtain a favorable interest rate, you were able to save at least 5% per annum in interest payments on the construction loan of up to $170 million from Deutsche Bank? Same answer. Is it correct that absent the $170 million construction loan from Deutsche Bank, you would not have obtained the ground lease on the old post office property or been able to provide the renovation to the property that occurred? Same answer. Next question is about uh, apartments held by your daughter at 502 Park Avenue. Um, do you know if the below market rent that she had on her rental apartments at 502 Park Avenue were provided in exchange for work performed 
as part of her responsibilities at the Trump Organization. Same answer. Do you know if the below market purchase options that you provided your daughter on 502 Park Avenue Apartments was made in exchange for work performed as part of her job at the Trump Organization? Same answer. As I was saying, we are back on the record to confirm that we have completed our testimony today. Thank you for your appearance. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everyone. Pop the record. Thank you all.